Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. So, we got the drinks. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys, sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God, you made it. Yeah. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. The name's Simmons. Nathan Simmons. And I have pills for everything. <laughs> Some make you taller. <laughs> and this is the Silver Lines Playlist, a podcast that 9 out of 10 dentists recommend. Is it true? It's true. Wow. It's, it's, it's on the box, but it's got to be true. Look at us. <laughs> We're back for another episode this week. Yeah. We're talking uh, Quantum of Solace. Yeah. The second outing Daniel Craig had as James Bond. I much maligned, mm-hmm. oftentimes critiqued, and rightfully so, Bond film. It's not the high point. Mm-hmm. You'll notice we're, you're not hearing a third voice on this episode, yeah. and that's because Mally said if it's not spooky, Linus, I'm not fucking doing it this season, because <laughs> this is two weeks in a row he's not here. And, you know, when he quit, he, he said... That he has people everywhere, and I'm still trying to figure out what that means. I don't even know what that means. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. what that means. But uh, next week is his movie, so mm-hmm. if he's not here, <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> I know. They are, can't do it without the family. Absolutely not. We need our family. No, and I, I think you teed this up really nicely mm-hmm. because... Let's open this episode up with what I imagine to be two hot takes. And I'm going to open a pack of vanilla wafers that I stole from my son. Hell yeah, full of hot takes. Much. I haven't eaten much, so I'm going to eat some of his wafers. No, yes, please, please do. Please, go ahead. The hot takes. The hot takes that are opening this episode. I, I think this movie, mm-hmm. while I do have issues with it, uh-huh. not only do I not think it's bad, like that's, which seems to be the consensus... I think this is a good film. Mm -hmm. I think this is a, this is a worthy entry in the James Bond canon. And I say that as a huge Bond nerd. Yeah, I, I'm right there with you. I don't think it's a great movie. Right. I think it's a good movie that could have been great. Yes. And one of the reasons why it's not is, uh, one of the reasons why I picked this movie to talk about this week, Uh which is this week is 15 years old as of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So this is the 15 year anniversary. This movie is famously, uh, one of the biggest films ever affected by the writer strike from 2000. 2008. Yeah. And I thought it was apt because we just had another writer strike this year. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're still, as we're recording this, we're still dealing with the SAG after strike too. Mm-hmm. So I thought it'd be interesting. We've done Casino Royale, the first outing for James Bond, uh, Daniel Craig. We did the last movie, No Time to Die. Mm-hmm. So I thought, why don't we talk about this one, which I know a lot of people, yeah, have some strong feelings about. Yeah. But on this rewatch, I'm right there with you. I think this movie is not nearly as bad as people say it is. Mm-hmm. It doesn't quite all hang together for me. Yeah. However, I think it is worthy of seeing again and reevaluating. Yeah. And I think it's pretty noble what they were able to get done yes. amidst a writer's strike. I mean, Essentially obviously. without a script. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there, there are some definite narrative issues here. Oh, and yeah. I will say, like, personally, the first time I saw this movie, so I missed Casino Royale in theaters, as we as I've mentioned mentioned on the show before it's my favorite bond film and i will regret it forever Mm -hmm. not seeing that one in the theaters when it came out but i loved that movie so much that i was like i'm never missing one again yeah and i saw this opening weekend and did not have the benefit of having recently rewatched casino royale Mm -hmm. and even just within two years i found myself lost through a lot of it Mm -hmm. and i think i think that's a big thing because this was coming out at a time when our franchise films in particular particularly Bond for 40 years, you know, at that point, uh, we're not quite as serialized. Yeah. Like now audiences have sort of been trained to be like, oh, well, I can't go see, you know, Doctor Strange until I've watched this Disney Plus series. Mm-hmm. But at the time, people were like, well, what do you mean it's a sequel? Like that seemed insane. Even, you know, 20 films in, we were trying to, you know, we expected a Bond movie to be a one and done adventure. Right. And uh, I think this one severely subverted expectations. It also, unfortunately, dates itself by really embracing some filmmaking conventions of the time. Mm -hmm. There is born DNA splattered all over this motherfucker. So much. For good and ill. Yeah. Because there are moments in this movie that are almost transcendent and then sort of become incomprehensible (laughs) through editing. (laughs) Yeah. The plot is the biggest problem for me. Uh I don't even so much mind the directing style and everything like that. Mark Forster is an interesting choice to make a Bond movie. I think this movie is gorgeous. Absolutely. You know, we kind of forget that because, you know, the next one's lensed by Roger Deakins, which, like, you can't fucking beat. (laughs) But I think this movie looks great. I I think the movie looks good. I think the editing is what I really enjoy about this movie Mm -hmm. because 
I'm I'm gonna go join and jump in a little bit here. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. This opening chase, yeah. with the car chase, yeah. I follow every step of this car chase, and there's a lot happening. Yeah. In terms of the action, I think it's no bullshit. The style of editing here, you you owe a great deal to the Born series, but I feel like this opening chase is fucking intense, and I follow every bit of action in it. And same thing with the foot chase later on. Yes. With uh, with Mitchell, like all of it, I I feel like the editing is the star here. I would go as far as to say that this. For my money is the best car chase in the franchise. You might be right. It's at least top three. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I'd put it alongside maybe one of the chases from, you know, the, <laughs> I'd put it alongside maybe one of the chases from like the living daylights or something mm-hmm. with the, and, and maybe the tank chase. I was going to say the tank Golden and Golden Eye. Yeah. Yeah. That's tough to beat. But no, I agree. I think. We're getting a little too far <laughs> too ahead of ourselves. Sure, we'll sure. come back to that. But when, when did you see this for the first time? So I, like you, missed Casino Royale. I was a casual Bond fan. Like Pierce Brosnan was my first. I saw Golden Eye mm-hmm. and the World's Not Enough and all of those. And then Die Another Day, I was still a young, stupid kid and didn't realize, like, why is this one bad? I was the same way. I was mm-hmm. like, why does this feel like Batman and Robin? <laughs> <laughs> And then Casino Royal comes out. Mm-hmm. I see it that year, but I don't see it in theater. I'm like, oh shit, okay, this is pretty cool. Yeah. And then I see Quantum as well, not in theaters, but I didn't have the like the the vocabulary or the knowledge mm. to know that Quantum was considered a bad James Bond movie. Yeah. Like I was just like, oh yeah, another Bond movie. Yeah. And then around the time Skyfall came out is when I like really I was like, I'm going to the theater to see it. Yes. This is actually a genuinely good movie now because I had by that point I was when did Skyfall come out? 2012. 2012. Yeah. By that point, I was 22. I had already like started really engrossing myself with film and mm-hmm. learning the language of cinema and all that good stuff. So like, I really appreciated Skyfall for being like, oh, this is like a no shit good movie, like a really good movie. Yeah. And then I went back and watched Casino and really appreciated that one. And sure. Quantum, yeah, I was kind of lukewarm on it. I didn't hate it. It's funny, right? Like, I feel like when I bring up Quantum of Solace, as I've told some folks, we're, we're covering it while I'm, you know, while I'm taking notes and everything. And then the reaction, one of my best friends has been like, I've never finished that movie and I will never go back and rewatch it. What? Like, and it's like some people truly, truly find this movie to be incomprehensible. I mean, to their credit, it's not. <laughs> yeah. And just low quality. I mean, it doesn't have the, no, it doesn't have the best plot, but I, I feel like, well, you know, my, uh, our, our friend Josh, uh, he and I have been going through the classic Bond movies mm-hmm. and I gotta tell you guys they don't all have the like i feel like most bond movies you can cut 20 minutes from yep. and you'd have a much tighter film yep. this movie does that legwork for you by being an hour 40 mm-hmm. holy shit it's the shortest bond movie and i think this thing just moves but like watching diamonds are forever for instance you're like okay there's a meat packing magnate there's uh there's a stuff going on in las vegas mm-hmm. there's a faked moon landing at one point in the movie mm-hmm. there's also you know a funeral home that's selling diamonds or drugs or something like i and then yeah i I feel like people forget that classic bond is always a little convoluted yeah i I think the biggest problem with this movie for me is it's two movies competing it is at the same time it is a continuation of casino royale with the revenge plot and bond tracking down the leads of what happened in that movie right and also kind of dealing with this small time villain and dominic green and his (laughs) plot dominic green the evil version of rango oh my god (laughs) it is it Um, is the plot of rango but also on top of that like i think in retrospect this movie takes some dings because you know they create quantum because they don't have the rights to specter at this point and then they get the rights back to specter we get specter which is a piece of shit (laughs) yeah i mean i'll be honest i that's the one Craig movie I just really can't go to bat for. Nope. And then retrospectively you're like, okay, well this doesn't really tie together except for like, you know, a, an offhanded line of dialogue from Blofeld about how like, oh, Quantum was one of my subsidiaries. Yeah. Like, you know. And they, I feel like the Broccoli's didn't like this movie post either because yeah. if you watch Spectre and in that scene where Bond is in the building before it blows up and Lance Deuce trapped in there and there's pictures of yeah. Silva and there's pictures of Le Chiffre, <laughs> Le Chiffre. there is yeah. no picture of Dominic Green. It's far as i can tell oh i think he might be like in the opening credits or something but that's about it yeah because they do or maybe i'm thinking of uh no time to die one of the movies has like images of all the previous craig villains Mm. 
Yeah, because I remember distinctly being like, I don't see Dominic Green in here no Mm -mm. fucking anywhere. But no, I, I, yeah, I I think this movie warrants a reevaluation. And again, it would have been so much better with the writers being a part of it. Yes. But, you know, given the nature of what it is, I don't think this movie is nearly as bad as people make it out to be. I also appreciate that it's very atypical Mm -hmm. when compared to the Bond formula, right? Like, Mm -hmm. that's one of the things I like about No Time to Die is that Bond has, Bond already has someone he's in love with. Mm -hmm. So he's not, he's not sleeping his way around. I mean, there's that, that are, that does happen in quantum, Yeah, but quantum, you know, the, the, his, his relationship with Kamiya is totally not a sexual one. There is a platonic, it's a platonic relationship. Even they they even try to kiss and it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, There's there. And it's, it's a, just a straightforward revenge plot. I mean, Mm -hmm. I think you've said you're a big license to kill fan, right? Like you like that one with Dalton. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I don't know. I, there's something, there's something about when they break with tradition in such a huge way. And uh, a lot of this movie is just Craig constantly on the move. Yeah. And, I, and I love that about it as well. I mean, I, I know people are like, I want to go see a bombing. I want to see him go to locales and sleep with women and stuff like that. And I'm like, <laughs> sure. I get it. I totally hear you. But we don't need that every time. Yeah. I like that this one got a little experimental. And yeah. not only with that, but just like... That, like I said, the editing and everything, like the direction of like, we're going to have an adventure in the air. Mm-hmm. We're going to have an adventure in, in the sea. We're going to have an adventure on land. And they do all that. There's the airplane stunt. There's the boat stunt. Yeah. But like he sleeps with one woman in this movie, Strawberry Fields, mm-hmm. and it's purely for the plot. Like, because she, her whole job is to bring him in. And he's like, well, I'll just charm her and seduce her. Yeah. To keep her around. You know, that is a that I do have an issue. It will get there. But like, even that feels almost like the part of the movie that feels like a checklist to me right a like oh we gotta throw some bond stuff in there but but also a little bit mean-spirited yes absolutely if i'm being honest but yeah i i think this movie just got a lot more going for it i mean look i love casino royale but the one of the things i really like about this movie is we get the bond theme significantly more in this one yeah there is a lot of the the homages to that original song yeah yeah all right well it's been a while, Nathan, mm-hmm. and since it's just you and I here, we're teachers on sabbatical, we just won the lottery, <laughs> Yeah, and why don't we talk about the, the cast and the release of Quantum of Solace. All right. Which is a title that I genuinely love, but I see a lot of people fucking hate it. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. But I love it. I don't hate it. I I, I mean, it is a Fleming title mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. It does feel very like, well, what does that even mean? And it does it does mean something. He gets this small bit of, you know, comfort mm-hmm. from the, the, the idea of revenge. And he's looking for that. Yeah. And it's always sort of out of reach. I will say there is another Fleming title that is maybe a better suited title for this movie. And that's Property of a Lady. Yeah. Yeah, because this whole movie is him essentially still belonging to either Vesper or M, Mm -hmm. depending on how he feels at the time. Yeah. Yeah. One of the few titles that's still left to be used, right? I know they 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 should do it with the next one. Yeah. It's it's tough. I think they should just or go, 007 in New York. I was just about to say. I think you go with that one. Set do because they want to do a period piece mm-hmm. set in New York. That'd be interesting. Oh man, yeah, absolutely. So just as a recap, the year is two thousand eight. The director, as we mentioned, is Mark Forster. Mm-hmm. Uh, the movie stars Daniel Craig. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try here. Olga Kurylenko, uh-huh. Matthew Amorik. Judy Dench, Giancarlo Giannini, mm-hmm. Gemma Arterton, Jeffrey Wright, and David Harbour oh. gets mentioned on Roger Ebert's website. Yeah. For guy who was in this movie. <laughs> Had a budget of $200 million, grossed $590 million worldwide. Right. Currently sits at, what's well, probably an apt, 64% on Rotten Tomatoes, mm. and was nominated for Best Sound and Best Special Effects at the BAFTAs. No Oscar noms for this one, which is kind of interesting. Yep, nothing. Man, we were really spoiled. This came out like just under two years after Casino Royale. Yeah, I know. And then the 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 waits between Bond films just kept getting longer and longer. So I mean, it's crazy. Like if you look, I mean, that's why even though Daniel Craig hasn't done that many Bond movies yeah. in relation to like Roger Moore, Roger Moore, Sean Connery. Yeah, he's the longest tenure as Bond because they took so fucking long. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Well, let's revisit the trailer, Nathan. Mm -hmm. I haven't watched this trailer since the movie came out. Me neither. So I am curious to see what this looks like. It'd be a pretty cold bastard who didn't want revenge for the death of someone he loved. I don't think the dead care about vengeance. 
Ugh, great line. Yeah. The trailer's got a cold open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about us is that we have people everywhere. What the hell is this organization, Bond? How can they be everywhere and we know nothing about them? A lot of Mr. White in this trailer. <laughs> yeah. Which is so funny because I remember when No Time to Die came out and people just being like, who is that? Mm -hmm. Or Spectre. Dude, that Spectre trailer with him. Oh my god. You're a kite dancing in a hurricane. It's a great trailer. It is. You know who Green is and you want to put us in bed with him. Yeah, you're right. We should just deal with nice people. Get in. All right. Careful with this one, Mr. Bond. She won't go to bed with you unless you give her something she really wants. I think someone wants to kill you. Ah. Uh. You two do make a charming couple, though. You're both, what's the expression? I'm going to say something maybe controversial. Uh-huh. This is the best Daniel Craig looks as Bond. I've heard a lot of people say it. I don't disagree. I think No Time to Die, I think he looks better. I think he's really, well, yeah. He, I mean, he looks fantastic in all his little sweaters. Mm -hmm. But no, he 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 he's really bulky in Casino Royale. And then this one, he's live. Yeah. Like, he's got a, he's moving constantly in this one. I just think he looks a little more boyish in this movie, especially his haircut at the beginning. I agree. But, God, those suits are, like, painted on, man. That's Tom Ford for you. Right now, I think you're the only person I can trust. James. Move your ass. Oof. I wish I could set you free. But your prison is in there. <laughs> this gets Brosnan y, you know? E right. Like, this feels world is not enough or yeah. tomorrow never dies. Yeah, that's very action focused, yeah. that trailer. So where do we want to start? I mean, I mean, we 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 open with that great great car chase. Yeah, I, I think it's they do some interesting editing decisions here uh -huh. because they do this both here in the cold open and then post the, the the theme song. The opening shot is like we're pushing in on this seaside tunnel, mm -hmm. intercut with almost like a TV commercial esque shots of Bond in the car, and it's <laughs> it's beautiful. Like this looks like a a TV commercial. You know what hit me the most in that establishing shot is the grain. Yes, I was like, I am sight the film grain in this shot is what I am missing from these movies now. It's gritty. It feels gritty. Mm -hmm. And then they do a similar thing with the horse race. Oh yeah, uh, with the Mister White scene, which I love. Uh -huh. I love that we kind of like intersperse this stuff. Like, I, I like that this movie just gets right to it. Mm -hmm. Like, this movie just starts. We're in the middle of this car chase. It's intense as shit. I, I don't know. The stunt work is insane. Mm -hmm. like, it's it's truly great stuff. It's great stuff. I think some of the stuff in in the car itself, inside the car, is a little tough to follow. Oh, really? I think all of the actual chase. I don't know what it is. Like, when I, whenever he's, like, moving around and uh, the, 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 the quick cuts of him, like changing gears mm -hmm. some of that i get gets a little muddy for me but okay. i uh, all of the actual geography of the chase i am able to follow and, yeah. I, and it's so it's so exciting it, it's a it's a great car chase yeah and the reveal that mr white was in the trunk the whole time gets a good <laughs> laugh out of me oh man and i am such a sucker for he gets a little scampy freeze frame he before does. we jump into the title sequence okay so i know this is a point of contention <laughs> And we'll go ahead and talk about it now. I know a lot of people hate this song. Okay. The song by Jack White and Alicia Keys. Another Way to Die. I think there are way worse songs in the Bond franchise's history than this song. There's worse songs in the Craig movies. <laughs> there is. There sure is. There's one. <laughs> I get it's not everyone's bag, mm. but I think it mostly works. I think if anything, my biggest complaint is it should be either Jack White or Alicia Keys singing <laughs> and not both. Yeah. I don't think they play well together. This was my note is that I think this song is fantastic for the first two and a half minutes. Yeah. And then I think Jack White forgot to write lyrics for the rest of it. Oh, yeah. And the second half of the song that's just, whoa, I that, is that I don't like, like, that I don't like that. Not good. <laughs> no. I wrote, this sucks shit without Alicia Keys on it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I don't like that either. But I read this interview with Jack White where he was like, 
you know, they came to me really late in production. And so I had like two weeks to deliver this song. And because of that, they let me get away with stuff that I don't think they would have otherwise. True. I I, I think they wanted Amy Winehouse, right? So they wanted Amy Winehouse and she was not well enough to, to do it. Right. She and Mark Ronson apparently did come up with like a demo that, but then they had a meeting with Barbara Broccoli where uh, she was just like, you're not in any headspace to, to do this right now. Yeah. Which I, gosh, I wish I could hear at least the demo. Like I'd love to, uh, we, we really missed out. Yeah. On top of that, David Arnold wrote a song for Shirley Bassey mm-hmm. called No Good About Goodbye, mm-hmm. which was not finished because they, they were like, no, the producers want Jack White. But then they eventually did finish it and Shirley Bassey released it on an album. And for our listeners who don't know, Shirley Bassey, the, the woman who gave us Goldfinger yep. and uh, Diamonds Are Forever and yep. Moonraker. Yep. And it is such a classic Bond torch song. And the melody of that song is worked into the score for Quantum of Solace. So yeah. it just, it feels like a, a piece of this movie's heart is missing. I, I also feel like the tone of the, the song here doesn't really fit with the movie. True. Like, it's very like, yeah, fuck yeah, let's do some shit. And then the whole rest of the movie is like, I'm out for revenge, basically. I made a joke about it last week, but like the opening lyric of another ringer with a slick trigger finger for Her Majesty mm-hmm. is so fucking rad. Uh-huh. It's so uh-huh. good. It's- it's, it's awesome. <laughs> and I say that as someone who cannot fucking stand Jack White 80% of the time. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. I, I get why people don't like the song. I like it as it exists. Yeah. I don't think it fits the tone of the movie, but to each his own. Right. What do you think about the the title sequence itself? Because we go for we went from uh, animated Daniel Craig shooting at playing cards to sexy sand and oil ladies. It feels more in vain of what it should be for a Bond movie. I agree, but they're not my uh, favorite mm. of the Craig era. But they're far from my least favorite. Yeah. So again, this movie, this movie is just is just it's right square in the middle for me. I think sure. I feel like we'll talk about it at some point, but it, it's Skyfall is like the top, right? Like as far as title sequence and song. Oh, a song, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were talking about movie in general. I'm like, I don't know, man. Casino Royale is probably number one. Oh, no. (laughs) Casino Royale, I think, is the better film. But I I do love those titles. Yeah, Skyfall is a great song. Yeah, and the titles are great. I mean, it's better than the fucking hentai shit from Spectre. What the (laughs) fuck? That movie. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, The tentacle porn. (laughs) Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Okay. So, did you happen to... Because this is the first time I noticed it. Uh, In this... Right after the opening titles, they're showing... We found this uh, Vesper's boyfriend's body washed up on shore. We're uh, supposed to believe a shark did that to his face did you get a look at it this time yeah this body's face is destroyed it's fucked up yeah Ooh. it's gnarly i love that that comes back to at the end of the movie yeah that, that you think that's a, a loose thread oh yeah and it, it comes back and it's great and i feel like i've missed this before because the first line is m looks at bond and says you look like hell and my thought is no he doesn't yeah he looks fucking great <laughs> yeah he looks hot yeah <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. White, I feel like, is an unsung hero of this Craig era. Like, oh, man. He's the scarecrow of the Nolan trilogy for this <laughs> Craig era of Bond movies. Like, he always shows up. J- Jaspar Christensen, mm-hmm. who hates these movies mm-hmm. so much, is so entertaining in them. The little bit of screen time he gets in each one, he is enigmatic. Like, that dude is insanely watchable yeah. and mysterious. And th- that kite dancing in a hurricane is the best line of any of the Craig movies movies oh, it's yeah. insane he also has one of my favorite moments in this film w- w- during the the opera mm-hmm. no i, I he, he's so entertaining and he you, you can really feel him being one of the few villains to actually like break through bond's facade here i mean mm-hmm. you know we, we get that brief moment where m sets down the file and he sees vesper's photograph and he's sort of just like you know, tenses up a little bit yeah. and you can tell that every time Mr. White makes a quip about, you know, you would have done anything for her. Yeah. You can feel him like, if my boss wasn't here, I would stab you in the face. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of opportunities and not taking them. Sure. When it's revealed with the stupid line, which I'm, I'm just so overhearing in any movie of, we got people everywhere and I'm mm-hmm. glad that M references it later, but yes, Mitchell, yeah. M's personal assistant, bodyguard, whatever, of eight years is apparently a part of Quantum, mm-hmm. doesn't take the opportunity to shoot Bond 
and instead shoots just some other guy that's in the room. I'm like, what a waste yeah. of your cover that you, that you built up for eight years. Absolutely. What a stupid asshole. And it, this chase <laughs> is extra chaotic because apparently MI6's safe house is in the Phantom of the Opera's hideout. <laughs> Dude, I mean, I, okay, so I know they know they can't top the foot chase from Casino Royale with the parkour and everything. Absolutely not. So they're like, let's intercut it and have this foot chase with this horse race mm-hmm. and we'll cover up a lot of it. Mm-hmm. And you know what? It fucking works. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it works. They do this. They he, they they go to this well a couple times in this movie with like the the cuts to another scene, mm-hmm. and I I think it's really effective. Yep. I also love. We are continuing with Bond is quick on his feet, but he's not graceful. No, this is a guy like this whole chase. He is constantly eating shit. He's mm-hmm. jumping into walls. He's falling off of buildings. Yeah. Like, no, he's he's a tank. He he is a tank. Man. He knocks over Mrs. Scorsese's veggie cart. Oh my god. I love <laughs> love that lady she's like oh dios mio <laughs> and the the reaction of mitchell tries to get away by he shoots a civilian woman i was just gonna say yes that reaction always gets me because it is so visceral she screams and buckles over and, i am so glad we both had this note because uh, i wrote down that he shoots this random woman in this crowd yeah and they cut back to her a few times they just do. bleeding out and some a stranger holding her and i'm like it is interesting to make that decision because because you don't really ever think about the collateral damage yeah. in these movies. And, and that is what this whole movie is about the cost of this job, right? Uh-huh. Same thing with Strawberry Fields later on. And How many is that now? Yeah. And she's like, that's quite the body count you're racking up. Yeah. I'm, this, movie, this is a good movie. <laughs> it's a good movie. I know. It's moments like that that you just don't really see in other... I mean, you know, we, we were... <laughs> I was just listening to the James Bonding podcast talking about Honor Majesty's Secret Service. I and do it too. <laughs> they, they were talking about the sequence where, you know, Blofeld's henchmen are dry, uh, chasing Bond and Tracy through that, that Christmas, Christmas village. Town, yeah. Yeah. And, and Bond is just like, drive through here. All the civilians will throw them off or whatever. And mm-hmm. I'm like, this movie shows us like, no, I, I'm getting paid very well by a shadow organization i will murder whoever i have to yeah to to, to make this yeah. you know to make this plan work it's kind of shocking because you don't expect that from a bond movie no just you don't cut back to this poor woman just bleeding out on the on the street and i i think that might have been part of it you know there's a there's an interview with roger moore about this movie and he's like i thought it was brilliant but also very like brutalist yeah and and I think that, you know, people really weren't ready for these movies to be less about escapism. Yeah. And as, as dark and heavy as No Time to Die gets at points, like that movie is miles away from the tone of this film. Yeah, it has some more upbeat moments. This movie barely does. Right. I love the scaffolding fights uh, with the swinging ropes and the pulleys. and everything. Yeah. I, again, much like the car chase at the beginning, I feel like I follow pretty much every beat of this movie and how too. intense it is. Yeah. And this shit's awesome. That final shot man where he just pulls himself up and shoots and yeah. I, I love how it just stays on him all the sound cuts out yeah it just stays on him be like you know he shot that guy and you don't need to see it you know what i mean the tracking shot uh, of them going through the skylight oh. is incredible yeah they, they do some experimental stuff in this movie that works yeah yeah uh my next note is ah rory kinnear dude i wrote the same thing <laughs> in all caps <laughs> <laughs> oh i love it yeah i wrote the same fucking thing I, from now on anytime rory kinnear's in a movie that's my note <laughs> Absolutely. I love that. I love Tanner. Mm-hmm. Uh, very excited to see him in this one. I forgot he was in Quantum. Yeah. What I what I don't love is this minority report computer wall that see, they have in this okay. film. We're going to have some contention right here. I need this. <laughs> I need this table, man. No, I think it's dope. Yeah. But like, like, there's a bit in this movie where Rory Kinnear takes a phone call. Yeah. And then just a hologram of James Bond appears in the room. And I'm like, you can just take a phone call. Yeah. Well, I like I do like it because if you're remember the juxtaposition from this movie to Skyfall mm. where they have to like retreat to the bunkers that's true and do like low tech stuff I like that they're showing the flashy stuff now so you know what you're missing they do but then that's also the movie that introduces Q so yeah. I'm just like do we want gadgets or not it also introduces <laughs> the idea that oh Bond's too old even <laughs> though if you take Casino and this movie sure. as one mission as it kind of is he's been at it for a week yeah and you're like, yeah he's, he's had too much He's just too old. Yeah. So I I get a little hazy on the plot details. So Mm. 
They captured Lashif in the last movie. Lashif, uh, uh, Lashif was killed yes. by Mr. White. Right. And then... His money, I meant. Sorry, they captured his money. Right. And they've recovered his body his and his money, and they took all the money out of Mitchell's wallet as well. Right. And they've found bills that they had tagged for right. Lashif's operation. Okay. And then they ran that through circulation and figured out uh, the, the vi- like, Mr. White's contact. The geologist in Haiti. Yes, the geologist named... Mr. Slate. Mr. Slate, who is a, like, buff-ass knife aficionado who's a geologist okay <laughs> no so so that's where i always get confused as well the guy that attacks bond in the hotel room is not mr slate oh that is the guy that mr green sent to kill Camilla. mr slate is the guy that's floating in the water that oh, he that, Ms., that green shows to her okay. later i thought that it's was not just, clear <laughs> i thought that was just an unrelated guy because he starts talking about uh oh when i was a child and i had a babysitter whatever the fuck he's talking about there no, he, he looks right he looks down into the water and he goes it's a shame he was one of my best geologists ah okay thank you for tying that up because i was very confused why this guy was a geologist <laughs> i didn't get that until this watch sure i was i i've previous watches i've been like yeah this geologist is like a this is the, the killer. killer yeah i love this fight i love that there's no score to it oh it's so good it is just the jason Bourne. yes but it works for this movie oh yeah the the book fight mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah but this exacerbates the ruthlessness of Bond in this movie because this he immediately goes for two different arteries. He kills. He stabs him in yeah in the neck and everything, and then w- doesn't even look at the man while he's bleeding out. Mm-hmm. Like he, he can't bring himself to look at the guy. Yeah, and I'm like Jesus, dude. He like- <laughs> holds his mouth while he bleeds out, and instead looks around just to make sure no one's seeing him. Yeah, it's yeah. See, I think it's both. I think it's him looking around to make sure no one's seeing him, and also I can't bring myself to look at this guy. Oh yeah, yeah he has to dehumanize him. Yeah. It's the same thing he does to the guy he drowns in the sink yeah. in Casino Royale, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's great. And I'm keeping track of this movie watching it too. I'm like, Jesus, this guy can't keep anybody alive. He just <laughs> murdered all his leads. It's like my, two of two. <laughs> it's my favorite bit where he call uh, he calls Tanner. This is also kind of kind of confusing, but I, I love this joke where he goes, Slate was a tell her Slate was a dead end. Mm-hmm. And Judy Dench goes, Damn him, he killed him. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh we get some some casual racism where this <laughs> Bond is able to just take this guy's briefcase because all white guys look alike huh lady I love that bit <laughs> and he I love I also love Bond loves a desk girl mm-hmm. anytime there is a, a receptionist or a, or a hotel clerk of, of some kind mm-hmm. he can get whatever he wants and that he gets has a been couple I know in this movie I know he gets to, it happens twice in this one well, it happens more than twice it happens oh, really? at the uh, the airline when he gets his credit cards <laughs> cut off and he's like tell them i went yeah yeah tell them i went somewhere else and it happens here at this place and Uh then it happens again i want to say at the party i think you're right yeah I, there's definitely because one of them is um it might even be the airport woman i read i read up that it was charlie chaplin's granddaughter oh weird if i'm not mistaken but i thought i thought that was the case mm. so bond is, yeah gets in the car like his his luckily camille pulls up and he's like oh the movie can continue uh-huh he gets in the car turns out the geologist was supposed to kill her so he gets out of the car and then this guy on this bike that was following him pulls up and man this i like this little stunt the way he flips the motorcycle out, out from underneath this guy it's one of my favorite <laughs> moments in the craig era Mm -hmm. i think about when i think about his bond that's like one of my favorite things it's so cool it's so casual (laughs) yeah (laughs) just flips this car out from this bike out from under this guy good chase good chase i know you haven't seen this movie yet Mm. but we get introduced to elvis who is the henchman in this movie Uh, evil lloyd christmas (laughs) i was gonna say no discernible traits characteristics other than his goofy ass haircut and he looks exactly like the haircut that amanda has in saw x that's so fun i've seen the pictures it is the goofiest fucking hair i don't know man what are you doing? What's incredible <laughs> about that is we find out later that that's a hair piece, which mm-hmm. means he chose that style. Yeah. Yeah. He chose the Eastern European Adidas tracksuit look. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> How do we feel about Mr. Green? I was, I'm glad you brought it up. This is my next note. I think Dominic Green in general is a weak villain. Okay. I think Matthew Almerich is not right for this role. Interesting. I think his plan is ultimately weak too, but <sighs> I think he's underwritten. I yep. think his performance is fascinating. He's making some choices. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do like his little uh, yips when he's fighting Bond in the climax. Oh my gosh, that's so fun. Yeah. I just think he's not given anything to do. Yeah. And the stuff he is given to do, I feel like he's he doesn't do very well. He's just making choices. And I don't know if those choices work. I agree. I think... <sighs> 
I love a Bond villain who's a weird little guy. I do too. I I needed him to have some kind of thing. The Chief's got the weeping eye and the asthma. And yeah. I need him to have something. I need all my Bond villains to have something. Yeah, I think I think one of the one of the issues I have with this movie, I love a I love a main villain and I love like a heavy. Mm-hmm. And I I think we kind of lose track of who is who, right? Yeah. Like I I think Mr. Like Dominic Green should be more of a presence in this film, but we're also still dealing with uh, Quantum and Mr. White. And then once we introduce General Madrano and, you know, Sheriff Carlos or Uh whatever, the the police captain Uh as a, you know, a whole other section of the movie, it it just feels like I don't know who who Bond is really facing in this one. Isn't. Isn't the henchman from No Time to Die also called Elvis? No, he's... Oh, Cyclops. Cyclops. Yeah. Cyclops, right, yeah. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, <laughs> so, this this scene is goofy as hell because it's like... For, well, first of all, we got to point out the, the biggest... The extra. The extra in this movie that's <laughs> sweeping the air. Got to point him out. Unbelievable. I, I, I might call an audible and say neither of us can pick him for our bit part. Just because I too... was going to suggest the same thing. It's <laughs> okay. not fair. He's too good. <laughs> but this movie, it's like Bond has never heard of stealth. No. Because... He walks right up to the gate, makes himself known in front of the camera, and yeah. then when the general shows up, and I guess we should explain. So Camille goes to Dominic and is like, hey, you tried to have me killed. Yeah. They kind of make up because Dominic knows that he's only getting close to her to get close to the general, who is uh, a business partner of Dominic. Yeah. Turns out that the general killed and yeah camille's family her mother her mother and sister and and her sister yeah Uh uh-huh and killed the father and left her alive because she was too young to do anything like to cause any trouble is what they said right the general pulled a kill bill volume one on camille after 100 percent. yeah he was like when you grow up if you still feel raw about it i'll be (laughs) waiting So Dominic and the general make a deal, and a part of the deal is that Camille has to go with the general, mm-hmm. and then Bond just leaps in to, to save her in this boat chase, and I'm like, Bond, you're a spy, dude. Yeah. Like, do some spy crap. Assess the situation. Mm-hmm. I mean, he he, it, it, he sort of like jump, steps on his own plan because he has that great gadget, which is the, the you know, the universe, well, it's not even really a gadget, but it's the Universal Exports business card. Yeah. Great callback to the, uh, the the, the con- Connery era. Yeah. And then when the bad guy calls it, when Elvis calls it, it immediately installs a tracker on his phone. Uh-huh, like, that's a fun uh-huh. bit. And I don't know, man. I It's kind of amazing that Bond literally, st- like, stumbles his way into this entire plot. He does. <laughs> he, and he, he rams the boat. And I, I gotta tell you, I watched the <laughs> I watched this on my Blu-ray mm-hmm. and the subtitles said clamoring in Spanish <laughs> for the reaction. Yeah. That's pretty great. But, like, he's He's very lucky that Green is a member of Quantum. Yes, because that happens a few times where it's just like, I'm glad you were here in this spot yep. for someone who is tangentially related to Mr. White. Speaking of which, in turn, I'm confused as to why Felix and David Harbour, I guess, are on this flight with Dominic. Mm. I don't think I got what's going on there. They are looking the other way while Dominic and his associates topple the government. Yeah, the Bolivian government. They have promised the Americans exclusive oil rights right knowing full well that right. there's, no, there's oil. no oil right i mean that just is stupid on america's part for not having any evidence of oil here well, and I, being th- like what what really confused me here is when he sp- quote unquote rescues camille which I, I characters called her two different names in this movie mm-hmm. i heard camille and then i heard camilla i guess it depends on if you're you know what the your inflection or your pronunciation yeah yeah, yeah. But she the uh she she says you're not one of greens and he looks at her and he goes dominic green yeah like he just now he's made the there's leap one that guy <laughs> there's only one green that this could be uh-huh yeah and i also am I, I mostly like the score in this movie but i don't like this sort of clint mansell ass yeah. like dun, 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 yeah <laughs> yeah that kicks in here but i do like that she gets knocked out and he just hands her to a guy and leaves just a guy and just leaves yeah and then uh we go to the opera mm-hmm. uh, we find out that Quantum likes to have their meetings in public, and they go to an opera, and they use earpieces to communicate to one another, I guess, to cover up everything. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. I do oh. like the idea of it, but it also just seems cumbersome. I love it. <laughs> okay. I love the idea of this evil 
company meeting in public like oh, they cool. are right out in the in the open yeah they're having these quiet conversations on earpieces i just think you really got to know the company you're in to right. make sure that they're not too nosy <laughs> i would also yeah i would love to see one person in the audience just go like Shh, yeah for real because they're like having like out loud conversations yeah and again you mentioned bond being a terrible spy my next note yeah he's listening <laughs> in and he lets them know that he's doing it yeah. i mean it's a great one-liner i, I really, really think, think you people, people should find, find better, better places place to meet, to meet. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. But I do love everyone just calmly gets up and exits except for Mr. White. The only intelligent one of this whole group. Yeah. And like, he's like, let me stay seated so Bond doesn't realize I'm part of this organization or, you know. I guess Tosca's not for everyone. <laughs> That's a great line. And then Bond with this, we talked about no Q in this movie. Q's around because he's got this camera that can determine a person's identity based on the back of their head. <laughs> <laughs> on a flip phone, yeah, which I thought was insane. Yeah. Insane. And then I love this choice because Bond goes after the quantum members, mm -hmm. runs into this cafeteria, and we drop all the audio out. Oh, man. As they're shooting back and forth, and we're intercut with the opera. And again, more people getting caught in the crossfire because like, you see other patrons in the dining room getting shot, too. Oh, it's, I know. Yeah. It's a bold choice to like make that stuff present in this movie, I feel like. The shot of Green seeing Bond Oh, and great. then just sort of having that that stare off is oh it's exceptional it's great yeah and and we get that great kind of spy who loved me uh homage yeah. it seems like that anyway where yeah, he's yeah, holding yeah. the one guy and drops him mm -hmm. and turns out that's one of ours right so. but then also james doesn't argue with M when she says you shot him and threw him off a roof is yeah. it just is he sort of like tomato tomato i well, did drop him but i didn't shoot him <laughs> like, well there's two notes i have about this scene in particular well, uh -huh. number one i love that in this era of the bomb movies we get little glimpses into M's home life because oh, sure. we get to see her bathroom that is fucking awesome i don't know why she's got two easy chairs in her bathroom <laughs> facing her bathtub maybe M's a freak is it this <laughs> one or is it uh skyfall where we see she's got like a boyfriend no that's casino royale that's her husband that's, oh, that's right with her yeah yes. yeah because she goes because he says oh she, he's hacked into your account or she goes how the hell does he know these things right <laughs> But the, my second note is M seems nonplus this whole movie. Yeah. I mean, she keeps, she calls him out about it and like, she's like, I'm quite a body count you're piling up, but doesn't make, like in Casino Royale, she loses her shit when he kills that guy at the embassy. I know. At the beginning. And Christ, I missed the Cold War. Exactly. My favorite M line of all time. <laughs> it's a great line. Yeah. This one, she says like, try, try not to kill every single lead, 007. Yeah. Like it's. It's it seems like she's aiming for more of a Bernard Lee or a something, bit, yeah. but you're right. Like the the intensity uh, is gone. One of the things that I love about Casino Royale is even though they kept her carried her over from the Brosnan films, yeah. she's fully playing a new version of M. Yeah. Like her performance was different, and then this one, yeah, it feels like business as usual. Yeah. Even though people are dying left and right, and it looks like your agent has become a serial killer. And it's also uh, keep in mind. This is still within the events of Casino Royale. So this he's still very new on the job. Right. So and so yeah, the, so the subtext is who the fuck did I promote? Exactly. Yeah. And I do love that she actually has to vouch for him later on. Mm -hmm. But then that scene that like it it deteriorates so quickly, like the tension there. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. That's that's a one point of uh, contention I have with that part. But uh so Bond, his his travel restrictions, his credit cards, all that stuff gets uh well, gets restricted. Mm -hmm. And so he has to go go see our boy he gets to go see mathis renee mathis and he's like you're the only person i can trust and i'm like well i guess m's chopped liver huh <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well he he has that bit later on in the movie where she says there's a kill order out on you yeah. and he says yeah who would have called that in yeah <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah and I love that they go and have drinks mm -hmm. and the Vesper cocktail has already made its rounds in the bartending world oh, because he's drinking a drink and he's like, what is this? And the guy tells him the recipe and it's just the Vesper it's recipe the Vesper. he made up in the last movie. I love that. I also love, you know, we, we don't get a whole lot of Mathis's home life, but mm -hmm. I, I love this interaction with his wife, Gemma, or his girlfriend. <laughs> uh -huh. And she says... You know, she th she gives him this like really knowing look mm -hmm. whenever she. I don't know. There's there's these. 
the quiet moments in this movie yeah. are what always hit me because it doesn't feel like, you know, a generic bond to me. Yeah. You know, she has the bit where she goes, uh, Renee, I want to feel your hands on my body. I want your hands on my skin. Yes. <laughs> and then she, she looks up and he gives her this like kind of sad glance and you, you can see in her face. Yeah, like, you know, he ain't coming back. Yeah. Like there's a <laughs> chance. I also love, you know, he's just not letting Bond evade how he feels about Vesper. Yep. You know, they, he keeps trying to deflect it and then Mathis just goes I think she loved you she died for you yeah and he's like teary eyed saying that to him oh yeah yeah it's it's a good scene J- yeah he's th- it's such an incredible performance and I I <laughs> It, it, I hate how he goes out in this movie. It gets a laugh out of me every fucking time. <laughs> I like, I, I like his character. We talked about it. Yeah, I like his character and uh, I like this actor. But man, it is funny as shit to watch Bond cradle a guy in his arms while he's dying, and then smash cut to <laughs> him tossing him in a fucking dumpster <laughs> and and taking his wallet and everything. <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> Pulls the cash out, throws the wallet on the corpse. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is where uh, we are introduced to Agent Strawberry. Oh. Fields. Oh my god! Oh my god! You, okay, you, you're a you're a Strawberry Fields guy. I am a huge Strawberry Fields fan. I am. Oh my god! So it's it's is it Strawberry Fields and um what's her name? Plenty O'Toole. Plenty O'Toole. Who? Is oh oh my god! Not a character. Not a character at all. But those are my top two Bond girls. But next to Vesper, so top three. So I I find that I needed significantly more Strawberry. Buddy, f- me too. <laughs> <laughs> But here's the th- here's my here's my beef with this. Uh-huh. When the Craig movies start giving more the Craig movies are more cerebral and they care about characters so much more than the old school Bond films. Mm-hmm. So when he sleeps with Vesper in Casino Royale, it feels earned to me. Sure. But this movie, I don't even see them flirt, yeah. really. I, I feel like. And then I do love her reaction of I'm so pissed off, yes. like I'm so mad at myself. Can can I can I argue for why I think it works? Absolutely. So she knows when she's going out there, like Emmy pointed out later on that she just works at a desk. She has a desk job. Yeah. I don't know why M chooses to send one of the most attractive women on the planet to go <laughs> <laughs> take take Bond in by herself. Sure. But I think it's to make a point, too, that like this whole movie, Bond keeps saying, I'm not out for revenge. I'm not out for revenge. But he is killing everybody yeah. he comes in path with. Everyone dies that comes in touch with him. Yeah. Including her. And I think at that point, it like sticks in his crawl. Like, oh, shit. Like, this actually has some repercussions. This was an innocent girl. This person could have gone back home home if i had just played ball yeah yeah no you're you're absolutely right if i had just played ball she'd still be alive she wouldn't have gone out absolutely horrifically which we'll talk about when we get there but like i think it's also telling too that that's the first girl that bond sleeps with after vesper he doesn't even sleep with camille yeah and the first person he sees for that there gets herself killed because of him. M says, like, she was just supposed to send you home. Yeah. They'll do anything for you, won't they? How many is that now? Yeah. And it is a damning indictment of the Bond tropes, right? Yes, that goes back to her line in the in the last movie, too. Yeah. Like, it's just, I don't know. I, I like Strawberry Fields. I like what she represents in this movie. I do wish there was more of her. I agree. I don't mind that there's no flirting because she's inexperienced. She's not a spy. She gets caught up in the adventure of it. She also gets to, you know, injure Elvis, which I love. Yeah. I mean, she's, it's like Money Penny if Money Penny didn't have the restraint. Like, sure. that's how I see it. That makes sense. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, it works for me. I do wish there was more of her in the movie. Um, I think she's funny and her, her fits are yeah. <laughs> incredible. <laughs> oh, yeah. Unbelievable. The, the, the coat that she wears, like, oh I, my yeah. God. The coats with the, with the high heel boots. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good look. And, and I love that she, you know, she's trying to stick to the script right like mm-hmm. she takes them to this little hostel and he goes like we're not fucking staying here and she goes it fits our cover we're teachers on sabbatical uh-huh. and then he he takes her to this like high rent place and he walks up to the desk and he goes hola we're teachers on sabbatical and we've just won the lottery uh-huh. <laughs> Great. it's one of his f- funniest lines it's so good it is funny because Mathis and her do look like they would be teach like high school professors or something absolutely so, or uh, college professors I should say but speaking of Mathis this the this also gets to laugh at me every time. So they get pulled over uh, driving after the party. I mean, right. we, do you want to talk about the party? I didn't really have much to say about it. The main thing I want to say in the party is that Green Green's scariest moment in this film is when he is trying to intimidate Camille and he shoves her up against this like 
railing yeah. and the stone wall cracks. Yeah. Well, he even says it. He's yeah. like, I could toss you over right now and just blame it on the fact that you were drunk. Right. And then she laughs and then he pushes against the wall and it's like, oh shit, okay. But yeah, yeah, I mean, they they all leave together and yeah, the police pull him over and they open up the trunk and Mathis is in there. And this is what gets a laugh out of me is that Bond uses him as a human shield. <laughs> the man's not hey, dead. I don't think it's intentional, right? Well, like, well, it's not, but it's just the way it's played out. Like he, you think, he, oh, he's dead already, oh, yeah. and then Bond uses him as a human shield, and then the next scene, you're like, oh, he's still alive, right? So I like to think that Mathis wasn't injured, right? But he was just like drunk, and then Bond gets him killed. It's just totally fine. Yeah, <laughs> he was just taking a nap. Yeah, this scene gets me though. It's I mean, rough. Mathis begs Bond to stay with him, oh. begs him to forgive Vesper forgive each other yeah uh and you see this is the one this is the one that hurts bond yeah. like he you see the cost all over his face should he have also taken mathis's fingers and put them in his mouth and sucked all the blood off of it yes like did, absolutely <laughs> take him to the nearest shower <laughs> dude that would have been so hot like him and mathis that would have been hot would have been hot and then yeah he g- gets the dumpster he gets the dumpster <laughs> what an <laughs> What a terrible way to go out. Yeah. It is unceremonious. It's just like, eh, throw a man. Who cares? <laughs> so they get on this plane, this rickety old plane that Bond uh, purchases. <laughs> I don't, what is, what is the purpose of the plane? Where are they trying to get to? They're trying to get to, they've been told about the, um, the compound okay. in the desert. The hotel? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And it's going to be easier to get there than trying to drive gotcha. or, you know, no time to drive. <laughs> they, they, they fly out there and I love this bit where Bond is just like, you know, he's going to make m- the, the guy who sold us the plane is going to make plenty more money as soon as he sells us out. And we see him taxiing down the runway do that immediate <laughs> they, yeah they haven't even taken off yet and the guy is like calling dominic green uh-huh and uh this this plane shootout's okay yeah i guess it's my least favorite of the chase scenes i agree and i also think it's kind of funny that they bond goes pretty quick from oh, i hope this thing flies to out running an attack plane <laughs> i am an expert yeah <laughs> yeah i am now an expert in this plane so they they jump out of the plane and they open their parachute way too late. Yeah. They would be dead as fuck, <laughs> dead as Dillinger yeah. landing here. But he just happens. Bond's luck in this movie is unparalleled uh-huh. because he happens to land exactly where he needs to. <laughs> in the sinkhole. In the sinkhole. And I guess we can talk before we get there, the reveal. But um, Camille tells Bond about the general and yeah. how he uh, uh, sexually assaulted his his uh, or her mother and her sister before killing them both and her father. And killing her dad and mm-hmm. setting their house on fire. And I... This monologue is incredible. I think her performance is great. This feels like a scene out of Fleming. Like this is almost, you know, in in the, like the Dr. No novel, this is Honey Rider Mm -hmm. talking about her, her growing up on the Island and becoming known for killing men out of revenge. And Mm -hmm. I, and he apologizes to her. Yeah, I think he does. that is an important moment. He apologizes to her for taking away her chance at revenge because he knows how important that is. I'm going to make a hot take here. Yeah, yeah. I think Camille should have came back in another movie. I agree. This character I know is kind of often overlooked because it's like the one that Bond doesn't really go for, like the big Bond girl. Right. But like, I don't know, man. I, she I, should have shown up in No Time to Die yep. and helped like Matilda yes. uh, uh, get out of the, you know, get out of the cabin or something. Like I, As much as I like Natasha Leon, I think that could have been Camille's role. Like, cut out this fake tension of, oh, there's a new 007, but have her show up as a Deus Ex Machina. Oh, that'd be fun. You know? Sure. But I don't know. I, I feel like this character is kind of underutilized. Natasha Natasha Leon? No, well, no, I think Camille should have shown up. I think you mean Lashana Lynch, though. Oh my god, yes. What have I been saying? I've been saying the wrong <laughs> Natasha <fucking> Leon, <laughs> Which is a very different movie. Now, now that, that I'm into. I would love to see her as a Bond girl. Holy shit. Just drunk as hell. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> Just her character from another period. She's like, oh, double O agents, huh? What a concept. <laughs> oh, boy. Good shit. So, Green is legitimately committing a war crime here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By, we get the reveal that it's not oil that he's found under here or that he's that he wants to uh, uh, have control over. Yeah. It's the drinking water. Yes. So, he had blown up some of these areas in the desert to control the water. He's building all these dams. Mm-hmm. And uh, we see that immediately when it cuts to this little small little like uh, desert village right. and like the water's dried up and everything. But Bond also here, the, like you said, he lands exactly where he needs to, but he also he sees an underwater reservoir and immediately is just like, 
oh, well, Dominic Green did this. Well, that, and like, he sees, this. it's a leap. This is the part that's confusing to me, is he sees some rubbles of rocks, uh-huh. and he goes, they use dynamite here. And I'm like, how the fuck can you tell? Right. <laughs> it looks like every other rock. Yeah. And then he steps on top and sees the ocean of water under the underground and says, ah, oh, that's what they want. They don't want oil. They want water. <laughs> I'm like, okay, buddy. <laughs> yeah. And he's, he's planning to control the water supply. Yeah. And this is where it gets a little bit frustrating because instead of continuing on to the compound, he goes back to the hotel. They just head back to the hotel. <laughs> where Fields yeah. has left Bond a message that just says run. Yes. So imagine how terrifying oh. her last hours were oh i don't i oh, oh. it's it, it's really haunting when you think about the story we don't see here and i i think this is genuinely a great homage to goldfinger here yeah so bond goes up to his hotel room yeah. finds m there and uh a few other mi6 agents and then finds out that strawberry fields is dead in his bed mm-hmm. her entire body painted with oil black oil and her lungs filled with it yeah. so this poor girl and that's probably just the tip of the iceberg honestly right. but like it is oh it's it's a rough insinuation there but it's also there's an odd sort of bit here where they take that to be like well bond's story about there not being any oil can't be true because look at all of this oil yeah <laughs> it's a it's a weird kind of double blind <laughs> they talk about oil so much in this movie and like ultimately the villain of the movie is done in with oil right and i'm like why is there no fucking there could have been oil i mean i get the water thing it's a nice little subversion of that but well according to mark forster it was because he wanted to it was because oil had replaced gold yeah as the most precious thing yeah uh, which I, I think is an interesting idea but at the same time i'm like well I, what does this movie have to do with goldfinger yeah <laughs> you know yeah like I, I i really like it on the surface yeah. i think it's a really it's a striking visual i was gonna say i just take it just as that just a visual homage i don't totally. take it as anything else so uh, that's why it works for me but yeah that makes sense yeah no it, it, it's it's a good bit i i also love that m is just like all right fuck the cia yeah i will <laughs> stick up for you james i'm gonna not I'm going to look the other way while you have your little winter soldier fight in the elevator. <laughs> another instance where Bond is either gone rogue or <laughs> yeah. he's suspended and on the run. Yet another one. And then I love this trope that Camille just always has another shitty car waiting in reserve. because She pulls up in this <laughs> yeah. other shitty car. And uh, yeah, they they uh, they go to uh, this bar where Felix is. Well, so so he puts out the word. He calls Felix and tells him, oh, I stepped out into the city and I want to see the scenes of felix walking into 10 wrong bars uh-huh. before he gets to uh-huh. <laughs> you know next week's movie has a very similar bit mm-hmm. where i really wanted to see a certain character walk into a bunch of wrong bars in rio uh-huh uh-huh if people have a problem with this movie the one thing that they can at least give a credit for is we get more jeffrey wright god he's so good it's great having him here he's doing a little bit more of a hammy performance here oh, than he yeah. does at casino royale oh, but yeah. i still like it you know i it's so he has one of my favorite voices mm-hmm. in hollywood mm-hmm. and it's part of the reason why the batman actually eventually becomes really funny yep. because it's two it's three hours of two dudes just rasping at each other <laughs> hey brother <laughs> i love that i love their back and forth i love how he it's like Bond says, I'm impressed with how you people carved this place up. Mm-hmm. And I, I take that as a compliment from a Brit. Mm-hmm. One of my, again, one of my favorite lines in the Craig era is, you better move your ass, James. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. How many, how much time do we got? And he's like, 30 seconds. Like, well, 30 I don't leave as much time at all. Yeah. You know. It's good. It's good. Um, and then these guys just burst in and start blasting away. <laughs> yeah. It's a good chase. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a fun little bit. It's a good little chase. And then we get to the final location of the movie. Well, not, maybe not the final, but the climax of the movie. Yeah. We go to this compound in the desert, this hotel. James instructs her, Camille, on how to make the kill mm-hmm. and not to second guess herself. I, I love all of that. And he pointedly says, you just need one bullet. Yeah. Because that comes back. Oh, yeah. But the general's there making uh, sex eyes at this <sighs> uh, ballet girl. The tension in this moment when he tells the waitress to bring the beer to his suite, like uh, everyone just sort of looks at each other like they know yep. what's going to happen and it's terrible yeah yeah um somebody mentions that the whole hotel is run off of fuel cells oh, i'm yeah. like boy that would be a shame if there was i don't know an explosion that would suck <laughs> that'd be, that would really suck huh why do i have balls in your mouth in quotes <laughs> is that a threat <laughs> Uh, yeah, he says, um, it's with green. Oh, right. it's Dominic with green. Green's yeah. like, I will, you'll wake up with your balls in your mouth if you cross me and the people I work for. Right. This is where it comes into play. So the general is in charge kind of of the police in the area. And then he makes a deal with, with green yeah. and then green says, okay, well, we're going to charge 
like three times as much for the water now that I own all the water in Bolivia. Uh-huh. And he says, I refuse to sign it. He goes, okay, you can refuse to sign it, but you'll wake up with your balls in your mouth and we'll have some, <laughs> other, some other dipshit dictator installed here. Right. And so he signs that and that's when he decides to go on a sexual assault rampage. Yeah. Real cool. I There's, there's a couple of things here that really upset me because I, like, we've already got the the grossness of this attack yep, right yep there is an egregious panty shot there is like an upskirt shot in this movie there that is. i was very like kind of put off by <laughs> like, can, can i tell you though i kind of appreciate it in the fact that i know that she at least still had underwear on right so we, yeah exactly no that's <laughs> maybe that's what it is is like the rest of the scene is so brutal we have to show that yeah. he didn't get what he wanted yes. which is i, I yeah i i get i that makes sense. I, it's a choice. It's an interesting choice. It's definitely a uh, choice. What I do love, so we didn't talk about this earlier, but uh, Carlos, a friend of Mathis's who sold him out to Dominic Green, mm-hmm. is driving away from the compound. Bond drops down from the ceiling and shoots that man in the face. In the <laughs> fucking face. And the best part is, it's not even 20 seconds after Bond springs his attack that this place explodes. Oh. Like, it is in- instantly, this hotel explodes. There is one stray bullet, <laughs> uh-huh. and that place goes up. And I, one of my favorite moments in this movie is g- the moment where Dominic Green makes Elvis stand up straight and point his gun, and then the whole room explodes yep. and takes that guy out. Yep. There's a couple of notes I got before we really get into this this fi- this fight scene. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever, Have you? ever just casually walked around gnawing on an apple? Because Dominic Green does that here, and I'm <laughs> sure like, does. what a what a cumbersome food to walk around with. You got to worry about seeds right. and the core when you're done. And I mean, chewing an apple, I don't know about you, but sometimes it gets stuck in your teeth. Like I, I was thinking that, like, is that maybe he was like, maybe that to your point that every Bond villain seems to have something. He's like, oh, I can't get a cat, so. So what if I just eat apples all the time? <laughs> it should have been that like he's got scurvy this whole movie and he's got to eat oranges and stuff like that. <laughs> he's Captain Barbosa from Pirates. <laughs> and then there's a shot too during this scene with the general and Dominic where Elvis is just in the background standing with a neck brace on. I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Yeah, that's a nice little touch. And then I got to point out the obvious too. There is no security on this military compound. There's three people there. Uh-huh. Like, they just walk in. Yeah. They walk right the fuck in. Bond gets there, <laughs> kills the three guys with guns that are at the front door. Yeah. And then, yeah, it w- runs rampant through this facility with impunity. <laughs> it's way too quick of a, f- of a climax. Like Absolutely. They, this, this fight needed more goons for him to dispatch of, but I get it. I, I Like I, I mentioned, I love the slow motion shot of Dominic running while the glass explodes around yes. him because he looks so uncool he looks so uncool well it, it does feel like a very classic bond villain thing to do like blofeld as soon as bond arrives uh, or the you know tiger tanaka and the gang drop in and you only live twice he gets in his little monorail car yeah the fuck yep, out of there yep and then i noticed this too because i watched this movie not long after the movie we're watching next week mm-hmm. somebody that's just a total creep licking a woman's face oh wait no what the fuck was that i don't need it i don't need it <laughs> I know this guy's scummy. I don't know. I, I, I'm, you sold me. Yeah, I'm convinced. You sold me with, with Camille's monologue. So, And then, yet again, Nathan, mm. more glass shards this season being used as weapons. Ugh, yeah. Because uh, she goes at the general with it, and I'm like, God damn it, that's awful. Yeah, don't hold that. Don't hold that glass. Don't hold that glass. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a reference to a song? I don't know. It sounds like it. it right? Right? Oh, man. Somebody's going to tell us in the comments, I'm sure. So this <laughs> fight this fight with Dominic and Bond's great because Dominic is so clearly out of his league ah! and he's doing little yips ah! and yeah! And then he gets his fire axe, which is great. He puts a fire axe into his own foot. It goes right into his foot. And I'm like, oof. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, and then Bond just holds him by the hair. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That wouldn't have worked with Elvis. <laughs> Not at all. It came right off. And then, man, this is like one of the most intense parts of the whole Craig era, I think. So the place is going up in flames mm-hmm. and he runs over and grabs Camille and she is just keeps muttering, not this way, not this way. As a Ugh. reflection of the story she tells where she said, I was trapped in the house that was on fire that, that the general left me in. Yeah. And now she's right back in there and she's, she's got PTSD and she's trembling. And it's, I'm like, it's an incredible sequence. It somehow does the impossible, which is I know Bond's not going to die. Right. But he is 
ready to go full on the ending of the mist here. Oh, like, yeah. He, he cradles her. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. And he takes the gun and he repeats what he said to her, which is, you know, just one bullet or whatever he says. Yeah. Like, I only need one. Ugh. And man, it is. The tension works. Yeah. This is a great moment. <laughs> And uh, yeah, he he spots a uh, a canister of gasoline. He shoots it. It explodes the wall out. Yeah. And then we get a cut outside where Dominic feels the explosion. He got out of that hotel so <laughs> he's, fast. He's like half. Yeah, he's halfway back to London already. He's so <laughs> far away. But they 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 manage to escape the hotel. It burns down, mm. and then Bond catches up to Dominic. And I do I do love this. He he says, "Oh, you know, it's twenty miles to the or whatever." He says, "It's you, you're not going to make it very far." Uh-huh. And he leaves him a can of motor oil. That's right. And says, "I bet you make it what ten miles before two you- miles before you consider drinking that." Yeah. And then I do love the payoff that we find out that yes, he did. Whether that was voluntarily or Quantum showed up, which is the most likely option. Yeah. And killed him and put the oil in down his mouth too. So because they found, yeah, they found his stomach full of motor oil and two gunshots in the back of his head. You know what? I actually wrote it down. I was like, damn. I was like, he went, <laughs> what a shame that Dominic killed himself just like those guys in Russia by shooting himself in the back of the head twice. Oh, <laughs> Jesus, right? <laughs> it's the same thing. Like, oh, what an unfortunate suicide here. I'm right. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is like one of the few times where we don't actually see the villain just go out. Yeah. Right? Like, and I, I think I remember that being like kind of a point of contention. For for folks when this came out was I like it I, I do too yeah. I think it's ambiguous I think it's it also leaves the door open for more quantum stuff to be explored in the future I mm-hmm. love that he says you know I answered all of your questions but we don't know what he told Bond because we can leave that story for another time <laughs> and because we don't have the right yeah right <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it is a shame that like they get the rights to Spectre back, and then they're like, we got to put it all in right now. Right. We got to clear up all these loose ends. I'm like, no, you don't. You could just say, I mean, they kind of do. They just say Quantum was Spectre. Yeah. And I'm like, that's fine. You don't have to go back and retcon everything at this point. But. Right. And then the movie after that is like, oh, by the way, we're killing all of Spectre. Yeah, we're killing them all off. Don't worry about it. Yes, it worked. <laughs> yes. My virus. <laughs> all of Spectre is dying. Yes. <laughs> Is this the only time in a Bond movie that Bond doesn't sleep with the main girl? It's one of the few, yeah, I would say. Who is he after in Skyfall? It's nobody, right? No, yeah, it, it, he does sleep with... Uh, Monica Bellucci? Monica Bellucci, he sleeps with her, right? Right, but she's not like the main... No, no, she's Inspector, yeah. Oh, you're right, yeah, yeah. I don't know There's who... There's the woman... What, shoot, what's the... What's the character in Skyfall? Is it? No, it is Monica Bellucci. Is in, it? In Skyfall, right? Because in Skyfall is where he ends up on the beach and he's just living that beach life for a little while before M comes and finds That's him. That's no time to die. No, 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 no. In Skyfall. Oh, both both of them do it. When You're he right. gets shot. Yeah, he gets shot and floats down the river and ends up drinking with scorpions on his hand and everything. <laughs> no, it's Severin. Severin is the uh, Severine in the in Skyfall because she's, it's that weird bit where he, she says, I was a sex trafficking victim. Right. And he's like, okay, well, I'm going to a raw dog you in the shower in the next scene yeah it's an odd moment yeah and then and then silva shoots her her and he doesn't even try to save her like yeah yeah i i have some i have some beef with skyfall yeah <laughs> that's a why i bit, haven't rewatched it bit. in a bit but does 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 he sleep with leia to do inspector like in the movie you know i don't remember i i don't know if i'll rewatch that anytime soon because <laughs> obviously he's he does because there's matilde in the next movie but i don't know if that she falls in love with him within two scenes so yeah, there's well, that i mean look at strawberry fields the same thing happened to her true so but strawberry fields doesn't say i love you <laughs> that's true that's true but no yeah uh camille thanks him and mm-hmm. then they they, ha- they have a kiss, which I guess is unearned, but there is no real no sexual chemistry between these two. It's, right. It is strange, but I also kind of like that. Because no, I love it. Yeah, it's a it's a great choice. It would contradict the entirety of the plot if otherwise. Right. And then we get, which is almost an epilogue, but this is really the the wrapping up of the story. It's a perfect bookend to Casino Royale because it opens with Yusuf, mm-hmm. Vesper's boyfriend, who basically pretended to be in love with her in order to sell her out to Quantum yeah. and, and get access to the treasury. He comes into his apartment and Bond is sitting there in shadow just like the beginning of Casino Royale, yeah. almost in the same outfit. And it feels black and white. Yes. Like, it almost would have been better if they did. 
did. Yeah. But like, turns out Yusuf is trying to get into the Canadian intelligence because <laughs> Bond reveals that his new girlfriend is a Canadian uh, intelligence agent. Here's a maybe a, a controversial take. Okay. Stana Kadik, as this Canadian intelligence agent, mm-hmm. has three lo- three words. She says three words in this movie. Uh-huh. And it is one of the finest performances of <laughs> any of these Craig movies. You think I so? think she's so fucking good uh-huh. because you see her not giving him anything uh-huh. and then she breaks. Yeah, she does. And it's it's so subtle and the sort of quiet thank you she says when she steps out the door like yeah. uh, crushes me. I think she's so great. He reveals it because she's got the same lover's knot necklace on That's right. that Vesper wore in Casino Royale that she said her boyfriend gave to her. Mm-hmm. And then Bond shows him shows her that he's got the same one. I knew someone who had one of these. Yeah. It's unfortunate that the plot of this movie, the Dominic Green stuff, uh-huh. feels inconsequential yeah. to everything else that this movie's trying to do because I this agree. is the opening scene and this scene are like great companions to Casino Royale. That's that's the continuation of the story. The Dominic Green stuff feels like a detour. It almost feels like this movie should have been the revenge mission and then do the Dominic Green yep. movie next, right? Which would have been good because then you'd have a buffer between this movie and the last movie, Casino Royale, together are one piece and then the next movie he's too old. You know? <laughs> sure. Like, another continuation of Casino Royale here, then do Quantum, then you, there you go. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. And by that time you have the plot rise to Spectre. You could have done that stuff then without having to make a whole bullshit movie about it. <laughs> right. And so the final scene here is it's it's great. I love how quiet this movie ends. Me too. M is outside and they're like, oh, um, we're going to give Yusuf over. We got information out of him. Luckily, he won't be able to get more info out of the Canadian intelligence and all that stuff. And she's surprised that Bond didn't kill him. Exactly. Yes. And then he takes out the lover's knot necklace from Vesper. He leaves it on the ground in the snow mm-hmm. and he says, uh, she goes, it's good to have you back, James. James, and he said, I never left. Mm-hmm. Or something along those lines. But she says, I need you back. That's right. And he says, I never left. Yeah, it's great. And then we just end with this no fanfare, nothing. We just end on this shot of the necklace in the snow, fade to black. And then we get the gun barrel sequence, which we didn't get. Right? So. And then. It is a great way to end this. Like, if they just did two movies with Daniel Craig, Uh I don't think this would have been a bad way to go. No, I agree. It's it's an excellent ending. And uh, it. You're right. Like, the movie doesn't totally hold together, but the the high points are so high that this one really rises in my in my rankings. Exactly. Yeah. I I just, man, that writer strike really affected things. Totally. Otherwise, this could have been an all-timer. Well, I think you can draw a line between how difficult this production was and Craig being so reluctant to do the rest of the movies in his contract, right? Like, yeah, I mean, he, he like, got, had to get stitches for this movie and yeah. a whole bunch of shit. Yeah. And he's fully said, like, I'm never making a movie that doesn't have a script 100% locked in. Right. I'm not a writer. I shouldn't have to be. <laughs> yeah, he, he was helping out Mark Forster write some scenes because they couldn't have writers on set. Right. And it's crazy because, like, the writers from this movie are the same ones that did Casino Royale and also the same ones that did Die Another Day. Yeah. So, the fact that they had proven themselves wholeheartedly with Casino Royale and mm-hmm. then they can't come in and continue it because of the writer's strike. And again, I do not blame the writers for that stuff at all. Oh, not at all. No. It's just an unfortunate side effect of that is what we get with this movie. But You can you see the seams. Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. I just, I think this movie needs a reappraisal. I think people need to give it a second chance. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people say, oh, it's great if you watch it right after Casino. I didn't and I still had a good time. Yeah. So I think it does. Uh, I, I think it does work better as a double feature. Sure, but yeah, I, I think it's. I think it's still a, a, a good adventure movie. There's some fun mystery stuff. There's there's leaps in logic where there. You know, it seems like Bond has read the script. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, I think it's a blast. I, and I I tell people to give this one another chance. Yeah. It, it just needs another draft. Mm-hmm. There's too many conveniences, mm-hmm. too many like dead end parts of the plot, but like it just needs another draft and this thing would have been gold. It's easily better than Spectre. Uh, well, it almost have to be. Like, <laughs> sure. It almost has to be better than Spectre. What a disappointment. So, is there anything else we want to talk about before we get into our wrap-up segments? No, I, I think we covered it. All right, well, let's get in to everyone's favorite. Yeah. Prop Cop. 
Prop Cop is where we like to look at the movie we're talking about this week, in this case, Quantum of Solace. And Nathan and I are going to take one prop from the movie for ourselves, hypothetically, of course, Mm -hmm. uh, unless you just happen to have these on hand, which that'd be really cool. (laughs) And please send them to us. I'll go ahead and go first. Yeah. I want, and I never noticed it until this movie. It's a real quick, you know, blink and you'll miss it. But when Bond goes to the opera (laughs) and he steals the little goodie bag from the other quantum agent, Uh there are little Q-shaped cufflinks. That he gets in the bag. Oh, are those not the earpieces? There, he gets the earpiece, and then there's a cuff link, and it's the letter Q. Oh, I missed that. That's great. It makes me think of the Spectre ring. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's fucking dope. I want that. That's smart. Oh, that's what they're speaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're right. Yes. Good call. Uh, what prop did you want? I also wanted something from the opera. Whenever he's sneaking in, you see this giant silver ball being loaded in, mm-hmm. and I just, I don't know. I feel like that'd be a good conversation piece. Uh, for sure. I also debated on just taking M's bathtub which I thought was fucking immaculate. Oh, great bathtub. Great bathtub. Well, what about bit part, which is in this movie, we've talked a few, a a little bit about them, but there's a few extras Mm -hmm. in this movie that are unnamed that have some significance, or maybe you just want to blend into the background of the crowd. But Nathan, what bit part do you want to be in Quantum of Solace? Um, I really want to play the tech guy who does like the money scan mm. uh, at the beginning of the movie because sure. I want Judy, he gets a couple of good lines and then I want Judy Dench to look at me and say, impress me. I know, that's such a good line. <laughs> it's such a good line. <laughs> yeah. I want to be, mm, I don't know, uh, Obama. Wait, what? Because- <laughs> He is in this movie. No, he's not. He's in this movie. <laughs> Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Holy there is an extra <laughs> at the party for Green Planet. He is a feature. He, like, he gets a hero shot during the little opening montage of the party. And he's at the bar. He's in a tan suit, too, oh. which I feel like is very important to pull out. My God. You're having your mind blown by this, aren't you? <laughs> he looks like Mark Margolis playing Obama. <laughs> Uh, if you're watching the movie, it's about 56 minutes in. It's at the right, right at the beginning of where this party starts. But I'm like, what the fuck? He's up at the bar. R- remember now, this movie came out 2008. Yeah. What happened else in 2008? Mm-hmm. I don't think this was unintentional. So. Um, let me have beer. <laughs> uh, let me let me be frank. I would like a beer. <laughs> but if I can't be him, if I can't be Obama... <laughs> Just keep looking at it. It's, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. No, the tan suit has to be on purpose, right? Because that be. was it's like you remember be. tan suit gate, yeah. the dumbest controversy of all time. The dumbest at the time, we should say. The dumbest controversy at the time was the tan suit. Well, the most unwarranted one. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So if I can't be Obama, <laughs> I want to be. I want to be uh, during the boat chase scene mm-hmm. when Bond takes Camille off the general's boat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They start getting into like little, like, almost like bumper car moments with the boats that the henchmen are on in his boat. Uh-huh. There is a guy that Camille rips into with a fucking giant hook. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And like scoops him into the water. I'm like, God damn, I want to do that. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> that sounds cool as shit. I did have one more. Sure. There's, uh, there's another henchman that Green has that I don't think is named, but at the opera, Elvis like is loving the opera mm-hmm. and he has this like little smile and he looks back at the other henchman. <laughs> it's just and that dude is like non plus. It's kind of a nice moment. You know, the more I think about it, this more this, this movie feels like in the Craig era, like the Mission Impossible 2 of that era. Totally. Like, they had very uh, specific direction for both of them. Uh-huh. They had rock and roll versions of the, the title song. Do I need to, do I need to rewatch that? Dude, I just rewatched all of them. Yeah. Two is underrated. Really? Okay. It's goofy as hell, but I loved it. I had a lot of, it's very of the time. Sure. But I mean, just little things that John Woo does in that. Right. Like we're in the, the, Climax of the movie, Tom Cruise kicks a knife up from the soil, like the sand, Uh and like catches it and it's cool as shit like it's the coolest fucking thing all right yeah i'll give it a shot I've, i mean i've got the box set here i just haven't rewatched two in a long time it's not good let me, <laughs> let me be frank oh let me be frank mission impossible 2 not a good movie <laughs> but <laughs> john woo is a visionary mm-hmm. it's it's middle of the road like it's definitely not the worst for sure i feel like we sound like one of those like fake ai tier lists where it's like <laughs> Bond, or uh, obama and biden uh-huh. and trump arguing <laughs> donald you're out of your mind <laughs> Dark Souls is way better than Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> Can I t- 
tell you, <laughs> that, that you just put this on my head. Uh-huh. Have you heard about this video game out right now called Lies of P? Oh, yeah, the Dark Souls Pinocchio. I had no, no one fucking told me shit that the P in that game title stands no, for Pinocchio. That's so fucking funny. I almost had an aneurysm when I read it. I was like, what are you talking about? No, because I was watching, <laughs> when, I, when I was watching uh, Summer Games Fest and they were like, and of course you take the role of Pinocchio with his <laughs> giant broadsword. <laughs> Wait, what now? <laughs> <sighs> I don't know. Maybe game of the year. Well, who knows? I have heard it's good. <laughs> I better be able to go into the well's belly and lies the pee. So. Well, Nathan, I think we've rambled on enough. We should probably get to the silver lining of Quantum of Solace. Oh, of course. I'll go ahead and go. Mm-hmm. Camille got her well-deserved revenge. Absolutely. I mean, she got to take glass shards to the guy that uh, assaulted your sister, your mother, and killed them too, plus your dad. Right. So, it, if nothing else, that had to felt therapeutic. Totally. What do you got? Uh, M has her best agent back. Mm, all right. I think at the end of this movie, they have an understanding that I that really makes the arc in Skyfall even more powerful. If, yeah. if nothing else, I think th- watching this movie kind of props up Skyfall even more. Yeah, like the their their connection. Like when 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 uh, M dies in that movie. Yeah, yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, it does feel like that connection stronger. I mean, there there really is like a disappointed parent vibe to M in this movie that mm-hmm. makes that next one even more poignant. Yeah, yeah, totally. God, I gotta rewatch Skyfall now. I feel like it's the best looking one. I think. Yeah, like it's it's so beautiful. Well, yeah. I mean, if you're going from Casino to Skyfall, and you just you routinely skip this one. I think you're missing out. Yeah, I think so too. Like genuinely. Yeah. And since Mally's not here, I'll give a third silver lining mm-hmm. just to kind of even things out. I think the people of Bolivia can enjoy their water again, dictator free. Yeah, hopefully. That literally, I put dot dot dot. Hopefully. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'll see. All right. Well, if Quantum left you feeling a little cold because it does end in the snow Mm -hmm. and it ends quietly, uh, what we like to do on this show is we like to give you a pairing, another movie to watch alongside Quantum in tandem with it. Mm -hmm. Uh, At the same time, no, you watch one (laughs) and then you watch the other to balance things out. Mm -hmm. And we always try to tie in as much as we can the two movies. So, Nathan, what movie did you pick as your double feature for Quantum? So, I I really wanted more uh, Judy Dench as a concerned parent vibes. Uh, uh, so I oh, went cats. Okay. Yeah, of course. <laughs> no, uh, I, I've been really wanting to rewatch this recently. Uh, but, uh, 2013's Philomena oh, with, yeah. uh, Judy Dench and, and Steve Coogan. Steve I think Coogan, she's yeah. unbelievable in that movie. I think she she was nominated for best actress. I for think that you're film. right. But, uh, I think you're right. Yeah. Just a, just a great movie, great performance and very atypical role for her. All right. Uh, I went with another globe-trotting spy movie, mm-hmm. and one that actually has the opposite end of this movie. Mm. Bond and this one, like I said, we finally put Vesper to rest, theoretically. Mm-hmm. And the one I'm going to suggest, the main uh, spy of that movie gets to walk off into the sunset with his wife. And I'm going to go with my favorite of this franchise we just talked about, but Mission Impossible 3. Yeah. Oh, I love 3. Yeah. 3 is so fucking good. Right. Philip Seymour Hoffman is such a good fucking villain. Yeah. I just rewatched all of these movies. That one alone, I was like blown away by how much it holds up and how good it is. Yeah. It's ridiculously good. No, I, I totally agree. I, I was, you know, I remember thinking that he should have been Blofeld when they Ooh, did Spectre. Oh, man. What could have been? And I think we got as close as we could with uh, Mission Impossible 3. Yeah. He, he's so fucking good in that movie. Yeah. what He has that bit where he's like, do you have a wife or a girlfriend? Oh, my. It's so, he's so fucking scared. I'm going to find her and I'm going to hurt her. Uh-huh. Like, he's <laughs> so good. It's so apathetic. And yet vengeful. It's it's oof. no. It's it, he's quiet and 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 purposeful in his evil. Like it is a perfect villain annoyed. performance. Yeah, and it's, he's so annoyed by Ethan in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that movie rules. It, yeah, absolutely. So, final verdict. Where do we stand on Quantum? Do we recommend it? Absolutely. Yeah. I think you're doing yourself a disservice if you if you're a fan like us who routinely rewatches these movies. I think you're you're doing yourself a disservice if you skip this part of the arc. Yeah. I think it's just as important to Craig's uh Bond's evolution as Skyfall, as Casino Royale. Mm-hmm. Not as, you know, it's better than Spectre. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh 
it's hard to recommend in a vacuum though right mm. like it's it's tough to say if you haven't seen casino royale you'll be able to like follow and enjoy this one quite as much yeah it's, i think it's not like a procedural where you like the old bonds where every movie was its own thing right you could just drop in and out of whichever one now this one definitely needs casino to to you know to succeed for the mathis storyline alone yeah you know and, and all the stuff with vesper yeah and vesper of course yeah no i totally agree i like i said many times it's not the worst craig era movie no. and it's not the worst james bond movie by far i think like i mentioned before i think purvis and wade really uh showed how mature they got between die another day and casino mm -hmm. and fortunately the rider strike kind of hindered their progress even further but mm -hmm. then they came right back up with skyfall so yeah i mean i think this movie still has a lot of good stuff in it that, that we've talked about there's still a lot to like in it mm -hmm. the cracks are obvious and visible mm -hmm. but you know, I take that as kind of like battle scars, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they went through the writer's strike and came out with something still manageable, mm -hmm. like still watchable, still enjoyable to an extent. So, yeah, definitely recommend it. All right. Any last words um, before we, we get out of here for the week? No, just that, uh, you know, Mally is not going to be here for the clue, but we do have a note that he left for us with the uh, the hotel clerk. Okay, well, let me uh, <laughs> let me uh, give you a little uh, a little notification right here. Yeah, yeah. And what does that note say? Well, Mally says, we won't be seeing Uncle Muscles at the barbecue next week. <laughs> we sure will not. At the family barbecue. That's right. Every Sunday, there's a family barbecue. Yeah. Well, if you haven't already, listener, please subscribe, rate, leave feedback, all that good podcast roundup stuff. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Just search for the Silver Linings Playlist. And we also have a subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash Silver Linings Playlist. And finally, if you want to uh, give us some of your feedback about this movie or about the show in general, suggest a movie you think we should cover on the show, you can always email us at the silver linings playlist at gmail.com yeah i'm very happy i got to revisit quantum i've been meaning to um for quite a while so i'm glad it held up for me and yeah i got nothing else rest in peace oatmeal and mathis yeah. <laughs> right and uh as always i want your hands on my skin <laughs> <laughs> excelsior 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 Excelsior! Oh. Look it up! Why do I have balls in your mouth? Hello, YouTube. If you've made it this far, thanks. Could you do us one more favor? Could you hit those like and subscribe buttons? Maybe leave us a comment on what you think of the show. We'd really appreciate it. Join us again next week for an all-new episode. Bye. <laughs>